Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today, I have a very important message that will bless your heart if you're a Christian woman, and it's something that has um, verily, hold on, I have a pop-up here. It's so convenient how these things come up right when I'm making a video. All right, pardon me. Um, I have a message that verily will bless your heart if you're a Christian woman, and it will help you in your walk with Jesus Christ as it is helping me. It's something that the Lord showed me in, in depth yesterday. And so um, often what I do on this channel is when Jesus Christ shows me something, then I present it to my sisters in the Lord so that they can be blessed also. But before I begin, I do want to just say that the comment section is not for feminists who want to argue and contend. And um, if that's your attitude, your comment will be del deleted. But the comment section will be open for those who wish to make a comment. If you have a personal situation that you'd like to talk to me about, it's better, however, to email me. And my email is always in the description box right underneath the video. So having said that, I want to now uh, present to you the message that I believe is uh, very beautiful and very important for Christian women. And this message is how to find happiness. You know, these days there's a lot of misery in the world. And there's a reason why there's a lot of misery. And this is because people, men and women both, have stepped outside of God's order and are doing things the opposite of what God commanded. When we consider these things, we can look at it from a political point of view. We can look at it from an emotional point of view. But because this is a Christian channel, we look at it primarily from a scriptural point of view, and we want to understand how to be happy from God's word. To, to look for happiness in the ways of the world is to find the opposite. So one might go to a, a medical doctor or a psychiatrist to get a prescription, to take a drug that will make you feel good. But that good feeling that you have is not happiness in the way that God prescribes happiness. It's deluding the mind into thinking that it feels good when things are not good. It's an error, but it's also something that ultimately causes misery and death. These kinds of solutions that belong to mankind and originated with the enemy of all life being the original liar, Satan, that these kinds of prescriptions that come from men only bring bondage. But to be in Jesus Christ means to not be in bondage. And as Christian women, we want to understand what it is that we as Christian women want to do in our personal lives and how to serve Jesus Christ. One thing I want to say is that we were all born into a feminist system. I was, and I'm getting a little bit older here, so um, I know that I was born into a feminist system. And my mother, as a matter of fact, and not to speak ill of the woman, but she was a feminist. And for that reason, I had a very uh, toxic experience with feminism, and I could see how miserable she was. You see, feminism does not bring happiness. It can bring a kind of gleeful, proud, and arrogant um, enjoyment of hurting men or demanding selfish things, like wanting things for oneself. So feminism brings kind of an appearance of happiness, but it's not happiness. It's indeed, verily, it is misery. So I've often said on this channel that you cannot be a Christian and a feminist. And the reason why is that feminism inverts what God made the world to be. So God made men and women different. And the way God made us is beautiful. And when we step outside of that, it's rebellion. We read in 1 Samuel 15, 23, that rebellion 
is as the sin of witchcraft. So we don't want to be in rebellion. The thing is, though, that because many of us were born into a feminist system, we believe a lot of things that aren't true. For that reason, I want to call your attention to the truth of the scripture regarding men and women and how it is that we find happiness. Now, uh, many people might think that you, you might think that you know what I'm going to say and be clicking off this video, and I urge you not to do that because verily there is a blessing for you here. And it's not something that I have heard spoken elsewhere and not like I'm any great thing. But I do serve the Lord every day, and it's my desire to be pleasing unto him and to present things that are both, they're very challenging to the world system that we live in, and they anger a lot of people. But these things are also God's truth, and it's something that we want to understand in order to find things like happiness and peace. The ways of this world bring sorrow and death. And the first thing I want to say now about feminism that we can all recognize is it has brought not only societal misery and confusion, it has also brought personal misery and confusion. Many women these days live alone and are obligated to be in a workforce that, that batters them and causes them to be suffer, suffering. They also are often in bondage to other systems, such as the medical system, or the welfare system, or the social security system. All of these things put women in subjection to the state and to a state that is Marxist in nature. So the state has a Marxist agenda, and the Marxist agenda is a satanic agenda. It's the inversion of gender roles, and it's something that we don't want to partake of. When we do want to understand, though, that we have been born into a false system and we believe many things that aren't true, and I know this was the case with me, so I want to call your attention to them. One of them is that to be a, a godly woman or to be a wife, to be uh, uh, behave in ways that are according to the scripture is to be oppressed or it is to be abused. This is a lie that comes from feminism, and many people believe it simply because they don't know the truth. Now, God has created an order in the world, and cats, for example, are different than dogs. A cat does what a cat does, and when a cat does the things that are ordained to a cat, it's lovely. But if you try to make a cat into a dog, it's not going to work out too well. So if you want to put a collar on your cat and a leash and take that cat for a walk, you're going to have some difficulty with that cat because the cat wasn't made to be a dog. Christians recognize that God made the world and we honor our creator. and We don't step outside of the things that he ordained for us as men or women. Now, because this channel is for Christian women, I'm particularly speaking about the role of women. And in the creation story, when Eve was created, she was taken out of the man and she was created to be a, a suitable servant. So let's just go there very quickly. Um, I didn't plan on going this, but to this, but I do want to to speak to it from the scripture so everyone knows that that's the source for the truth here. Uh, pardon me just a moment while I locate this. I don't want to make everybody wait for me to look it up. So let's go now to Genesis chapter 2 and in particular I want to read verse 18 here. Feel free to go back and read this entire creation story but for the purpose of this video and the sake of time let's just read verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. So the language here we need to understand. A lot of people are unfamiliar with the English language because they've been educated in the American or the British system 
of schools. Um, and this has corrupted the language and many people don't understand. So they think that help meet means help mate, and it doesn't. So the woman is not an equal partner for the man. She is a help meet for him. And meet, M-E-E-T, means suitable. So a woman is a suitable helper, a suitable servant to the man. Now, there have been many videos that I've done on this particular topic. And sometimes I get comments from young women who say things to me like, it sounds to me like to be a godly woman means that all you do is chores and you just have to do whatever your husband tells you and, and you have no rights. And the reason why young women think this is because they've been brought up in the feminist Marxist system. And this is not what God meant when he created Eve to be a suitable servant for the husband, for, for the man. The reason why God created the woman was because the man needed a helper. And he said, God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. And in this video, I want to talk to you about what it really means to be in that role. Another mistake with feminism is that we think, as women who are born in a feminist system, that if we're not taking on the role of men, that then we have no, no role that is beautiful, that we're, we're taught from a young age to envy the role of men. So to be in the workforce, to have a career, or even to be in subjection to one's husband is viewed as somehow being a slave in a negative, with a negative con connotation. So the idea that women need to be beaten into submission and that women have no right to speak anything to their husband, that, that this comes from the feminist root that is evil. You see, a woman was made to be a suitable servant to her husband. And this means that in her service to him, she's not an employee, she's not a beast of burden, she is an intelligent and loving and thoughtful companion to her husband, able to assist him in ways that, that no one else can. You see, the woman has particular, pardon me, particular sensitivities. She's made to raise children, to carry children in her body, and that may, means that God made her to be particularly sensitive to people's feelings. She's made also to be sensitive to her husband and to be a kind and a thoughtful listening ear that might gently and lovingly speak something to him that would bring comfort to him, that would strengthen him, that would encourage him, that would be supportive of the things that a man is required to do. The reason why feminism brings unhappiness is because women have not been told about the beauty of the ministry of a woman and have been educated to desire the ministry of a man, to either want to be a team member in the marriage rather than a, an intelligent helper, a thoughtful and kind assistant. So they've been taught to, to usurp what belongs to the man, either wanting to be as the same as him or to be over him. And this is something that originates in, in the false religion where the goddess is above everything. We can see this in the pagan religions with Ishtar or with Semiramis or with Mary in the, in the Roman Catholic religion, that what really ends up happening is the female deity becomes the vessel through which God is is brought into the world. And this is the paganism that um, is spoken of often on this channel, the idea of a triune God, elevates th this deity known as God the Holy Spirit, which is Satan masquerading as the vessel through which the Savior came. That this is something that originated in you know the time before the flood, but in particular, we can make note of when in in the Babylonian religion that Nimrod and Semiramis and Tammuz 
were the trinity that we can originally see. And this idea of the sun god coming through the vessel of the crescent moon, Semiramis, the moon goddess, it elevates the divine feminine over God, and it makes people worship a, a false deity that is feminine, and this Satan stands behind this. So I'm not going into that particular doctrine in, in, in detail right now, but that when we recognize that God created men and women to be a picture of Jesus Christ and the church, and the marriage being a picture of the relationship between Jesus Christ and his bride, we can see that when men and women invert this, and women seek to be uh, the same as their husband or over their husband, that this is Luciferianism, it's Satanism, it's turning things upside down. And for the purpose of this video, I want to point out to you that the minute a woman steps outside of God's order, she becomes miserable. If you're unhappy I, and you're a, a Christian woman, chances are there are parts of this manifesting in your life. Perhaps you have a job where you take authority over men. Perhaps you and your husband have this kind of team spirit going on where you think that, that everything needs to be side, de, decided by having a meeting together and you both have input and, and then you come to a decision through compromise. This again is something that brings misery and unhappiness because a woman was not created to be the head of the man. Very briefly, I want to go to the scripture and read about God's order. Let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Now, this is very clearly written in plain English. It doesn't need any interpretation. Now, does this mean that a woman's husband replaces Jesus Christ in her life? No. He stands in the office of headship over her. And this is something that a lot of women struggle with, and particularly women who have been mistreated by a man who are currently living alone. And so they, they fall into thinking that because they have no husband, it's okay for them to go around acting like a man in various things, such as their job, such as over their children, such as um, in their relationships in general. So what we have is we have, and this happens in marriage as well, but uh, in, in our time, what we have manifesting in the false churches is women pastors, women preachers, and these women think that it's okay for them to stand in an office that they are not ordained to. A woman was not ordained to be a pastor, to be a teacher of the flock, to be a guide to people about how to be a Christian. A woman was ordained to be a suitable servant to the man. And the man was ordained to do those other things. When, when a woman tries to do this, she's in rebellion. She's outside of God's order. And what happens is she becomes miserable. She becomes unhappy because this kind of burden is a burden that wasn't meant for a woman to carry. So a woman who's trying to be over the flock of God, so as a shepherd, as a leader, as a teacher, that she will very quickly fall into being miserable, being contemptuous, being controlling, and so on. And I know I'm offending a lot of you, but verily, this is true. And you can find out the hard way by trying to do these things when God has not ordained you to them. Or you can simply do what the Word of God says and find peace and happiness. You see, the head of the woman is the man. And this is true also of women who, for whatever reason, are living without a husband. If they're a widow, if they're uh, separated from their living husband, 
if uh, they're never married. A woman is still under the subjection of men, and a woman is not ordained to take the office of pastor, teacher, um, prophetess, and so forth. Women can prophesy, but they are not ordained to be prophets, for example, like Jeremiah was. Now, the purpose of this video is in particular to talk about happiness. So I want to go now to John chapter 13. And this is, I've, I've talked for a while now, and now we're getting to the, the point of this video. Let's go to John chapter 13. And let's begin reading um, here. Well, I'm not going to read this whole story, but this story here, this history, is when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. And we want to focus now on the concept of washing feet and what it means. So now let's read uh, in verse 12. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. Ye shall Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for I am. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. All right, I'm going to pause here, and I'm just going to point out that the disciples, the men there, call Jesus Christ Master and Lord. We also know that Christian women or godly women refer to their husband as master and lord or sir. That a woman is in subjection to a man in a similar way. So this is not something that we should be offended by. This is something that will bring us great understanding and joy if we're obedient to it. So let's read on here. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. So Jesus here is saying that he was sent by his father and he is not greater than his father. We had read in 1 Corinthians that the head of the woman is the man, the head of the man is Christ, and the head of Christ is God. There is no trinity. This is godly order and this is something that if we can grasp it will bring us happiness and peace as Christian women. So, in verse 17, let's read what Jesus said about this. He said, If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. So, Jesus Christ is telling his disciples that in service to one another, that in this way they will find happiness. Now we're going to talk about women. I want to go to the book of John, the same book, and let's go to verse. So let's turn to John chapter 12, and let's read beginning in verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead when he was raised from the dead. Now, Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, 
Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment set, sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? Then he said, not that, that he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, Let her alone. Against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. In this particular part of the Bible, we're reading about how Mary Magdalene washed the feet of Jesus Christ. And she did so in a way that a religious man, a traitor, a betrayer, objected to. And he wasn't the only one. A lot of people who witnessed this happen said things like, if Jesus knew what manner of woman this was, he wouldn't let her do that. Because Mary had been a sinner. She had been delivered from seven devils, as a matter of fact. So Mary was doing something that if if we think about this for a minute if a man had done that it would have been far more it wouldn't have been right for a man to do it mary was doing something that was loving in a way that only women can be she was anointing the feet of jesus christ with her tears and drying off his feet with her hair this is a picture of how a godly woman finds happiness. When we are in subjection, that is the right subjection to the men in our lives, this is a picture of what we do. So we are sympathetic and kind. We have compassion. You see, the disciples at this time were busy, you know, doing things and they weren't really thinking about what Jesus Christ had actually done and was going to do. And in the story and elsewhere in the scripture, Jesus said, she has anointed me for my burial. When a woman is present in the body of Christ, her role is to be the heartfelt uh, support in the body of Christ that is different from what a man does. And when we're seeking to do the things that men do, we are neglecting to do the things that God ordained women to do. Mary wasn't trying to be one of the disciples in that moment. She wasn't uh, sitting at the table with Lazarus having theological discussions with the men about doctrine. She wasn't exalting herself in any way outside of God's order. Rather, she was humbling herself. She was, she was doing something in love, an act of love and mercy that, that the men didn't do. This is particular to women. Now, when we're talking about subjection and, and the beauty of God's order, this is something that, that we miss when we've been raised in a feminist system. So we think more that the role of women is to be kind of as Martha was in that moment. And that is part of a woman's role. So she was running around trying to get the food ready and make sure everyone had what they needed. And she was very beleaguered about it and actually complained to the Lord about it. And, and he, he kind of corrected her a little bit. But Jesus Christ loved Martha too. Martha was serving the men in the way that women serve. She had opened her house to the, to the disciples and to Jesus Christ, and she was also providing for their physical needs. This is part of the role of a woman. And Mary was showing the other part of a role of a woman, her heart, her love, her compassion, her sympathy, her kindness. And this is something that is honored, Jesus Christ said, she will be honored for this wherever the gospel is preached. Therefore, we can understand 
that this was a very important and beautiful thing to our Lord. And when women see this and conform themselves to these pictures of Martha and Mary, they will find peace and happiness. Let's go now to the book of John. Let's read and John and let's uh, start in verse 11 here. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. So Mary, who loved Jesus Christ so much because, first of all, he had delivered her from seven devils and forgiven her sins, but also because he had raised her own brother from the dead. So Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had done thus and said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, Sir, you see the term of respect here that Mary is using for a, a gardener, so she thinks it's a man who's a gardener. She speaks to him respectfully, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and to your Father, and to my God, and to your God. So Mary Magdalene, a woman, the woman who had anointed Jesus Christ with her tears and precious ointment, for his burial, was at his tomb looking for him, weeping for him. And when she met him, she was the first one to see the resurrected Jesus Christ. You see, when women conduct themselves as women, then there is a great blessing for them. This is something that it's like it's hidden from people because so many women are running around competing with men thinking that somehow they have no value unless they do this. And this is greatly mistaken. So now I want to, uh, I want to read in Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, and let's read verses 1 through 3. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen them themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be to your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. The condition right now in the world is one of shame and confusion. Little children don't realize that they are a boy or a girl. Women don't understand the beauty of what God made them to be. 
men have abdicated their responsibilities by exalting women over them, and this has brought confusion and shame. Let's go now to Isaiah chapter 3 to read of this specifically. So Isaiah chapter 3, and let's read starting in verse 11. Woe unto the wicked. It shall, pardon me, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Woe unto the wicked. Well, let's read what wickedness is here. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. The truth of the matter is that when people step outside of the way God created the world to be, not only does it bring shame and confusion and woe, not only is it wickedness and witchcraft and rebellion, it also brings misery. It brings much unhappiness, and that is why so many people are unhappy these days. We want to understand how it is that we are happy, and I just want to repeat here now. Let's go back finally to John chapter 13 and read the words of Jesus Christ. So John chapter 13 and verse 17. Pardon me, that's not correct. Hold on. Actually, that's right. John 13, 17. I was looking in Luke. So uh, John chapter 13 and verse 17, the words of Jesus Christ, speaking about service. If ye know these things, happy are ye that do them. You see, the way that a man serves Jesus Christ is different than the way a woman does. That doesn't mean that she is not in subjection to God the Father, in subjection to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. What it means, though, is that she realizes the way God created her to be. And if she obeys these principles, she will find happiness. And if she doesn't obey them, she will find misery. You see, women aren't made to be leaders. They're not made to be bosses. They're not made to be men. And when they try to be so, it causes them injury, suffering, pain, distress, and unhappiness. But when a woman recognizes what God made her to be, and she serves in that capacity, then there's a special blessing for her. Again, I want to emphasize that Mary Magdalene washed the feet of Jesus Christ. And the way that women serve in the body of Christ is to love people in the body of Christ, care for them, do things for their physical needs, provide food or healing things, you know, things to take care of the sick, to support the weak, to feed the poor, or to minister to their own husband or to their children. Being servants doesn't mean that we are degraded. This is a Luciferian concept. See, Lucifer says that everyone gets to be a god unto themselves. And Lucifer wants worship when Lucifer is a, um, a false Jesus. So, as Christians, we recognize that Jesus told his disciples that to follow him meant to, to wash one another's feet. And women in the body of Christ have a special place of ministering to the hearts of people. And when we minister to someone's heart, it's an individual, private matter, much like the relationship between a husband and wife. The, the love between a husband and wife is not something for the whole world to know about. It's personal. And the love and devotion of a wife to her husband is private. So when women are 
in service or ministry in the body of Christ. It is this way. It's to speak to people's hearts, to encourage them, to support the weak, to strengthen them, to speak a word of encouragement, to be an, uh, an example of the way the church loves Jesus Christ. So when Mary poured out her tears and broke open the alabaster box of precious ointment upon our Savior's feet, this is a picture of how the church loves Jesus Christ. And when we love the brethren as Christian sisters, it is done in this way. Not to be a teacher, not to exalt ourselves in a role that God didn't ordain for us. And when we believe and obey the scripture, then we have happiness and a good understanding. The word of God says, a good understanding have all those that do his commandments. Women who are in rebellion, who refuse to obey the word of God, don't have a good understanding. And I would also say that they don't have happiness or peace either. I hope this message has been a blessing to you. It certainly was a blessing when the Lord showed me. And I look forward to hearing from you if you choose to comment or write to me privately. I remain here for you. As your servant, I am here to serve the sisters in the body of Christ. And please let me know if there's anything I can do for you or something that might be a good video to make. I'd be happy to bring such suggestions before the Lord in prayer. And God willing, I will be able to attend to, to your needs moving forward. May the word of God go forth today and bless many. In Jesus' name, amen.